Or it might let you know that you don't really care that much. Well, that's true. Either way, so. you're going to do some discovery. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And if you don't like that, maybe you'll buy a camera next or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On to the next <laughs> thing. Yeah. You know, I'm looking out there at you, uh, at you guys out there. Mm, the internet. Yeah. And I'm wondering, how do you compare two things? How do people compare two things? And specifically, we should talk about comparing audio gear because that's what we do, or headphones. But, you know, let's talk about how how we would compare two things. I don't know. I mean, everyone's probably got a different methodology. Some people probably don't even have a methodology. <laughs> it's whatever works, right? Well, it seems like a lot of people start with a test track. That seems to be the go-to. You have a track you know you like, or in the past it showed you something that you didn't hear before, you didn't notice. So you start out playing that, and you maybe just kind of sort of pay attention do you notice anything that sounds different? Does it seem really remarkable in any way or special? Kind of start out with the broad features. Yeah. Is there bass? Is there treble? Does it sound balanced or whatever? Well, the one thing you're comparing it to should be a thing that you're already very familiar with. You know, so that's yeah. your your baseline. So then you're that's not two new things you're comparing. Then then you know you got no reference. Yeah, uh, references having a reference is a kind of a plus. But the issue is, what is your reference? Yeah. And how yeah. can it be a reference? How do you know if it's a reference? Well, it's just a, it reference a reference to you, though. Yeah. yeah. But reference oftentimes is used to sort of indicate it's more or less as good as it gets. It's a standard yeah. to compare all to, which I guess there's some conflicting arguments there. But the issue is, if you don't have a system that is amazing, can it really be a reference? Because sometimes you see people do that. They have their system at home, and then is their reference, which makes sense. It's a rational thing to compare things to. But if everything you're looking at at a trade show is better than this reference system, it starts to fall apart to some extent. Now, how does that work? How do you compare things? Now you're comparing it to the last thing you heard that you found most favorable? I know when people, when people are at shows and they rock through a bunch of gear all day, they get fatigued. You get tired. Yeah. I mean, you get tired in 10 minutes. Yeah. You think about it. It wouldn't take long if you're... Especially if you listen to like a few oh, things in a row and the same track, I <laughs> think you're like, um, well, "This is the track I listen on." Everything you just yeah. hear, you just you know, so used to listening. To the I mean, same you'd track. probably go back again, and then maybe that's you know, and then narrow it down, or go back to what you thought you liked the right. best, and then focus on that yeah. rather than it seems ten like things. At, at shows, a lot of people, the first day they try to see as much as they can, and then figure out kind of what they like the best, and then the second day spend more time with the few things they like the best yeah. you know so but i mean like how would you do it at home like i'd say for, forget the show you're at home yeah. and you know someone was kind enough to send you another amplifier mm. <laughs> yeah or even let's talk about something simple like coffee oh. right you had two different kinds of coffee how do you compare them you, well, you drink them right yeah well yeah <laughs> <laughs> but this or any beverage issue, though, because mm -hmm. for most people this is going to depend on their experience and that's part of the issue. This discovery process that happens when you have more things, usually what it is is you learn the things that are important to you, the things you should compare, the things you look out for that that one time you heard on this high-end system and you didn't hear on your system. And it's sort of an issue because if you don't have the experience but you're trying to grow, you're trying to gain the experience, what do you pay attention to? And I think everybody's in a different place. It's kind of hard to really specifically say, well, these are the things I pay attention to. But... To some people, it's going to be the base. I always like, I look at these guys that do this wine tasting, you know, and you see how they do that. I haven't seen that in a while, but, you know, they take this little sip and they swish it around. Or they'll sniff it first, like they got it in the glass. Mm. They'll smell it first, whatever they call it, the aroma. <laughs> uh -huh. They'll take a sip, right? They're not drinking it. They're just tasting it. And then they ultimately spit it out, right? right. Cause it, cause, you know, you know, and on to the next one. Right. And I'm thinking, man, it seems like. I don't know. It seems like somewhere you'd get lost. Like, I don't think I could do it more than, like, a few different bottles. That is, the, that is the problem. Just remembering what you already tried, you know. Yeah. In a not getting like it mixed that. up. Yeah. Well, not Audio's to mention. not too far off that, though. No, yeah. It's complex, I guess, is what it is. Yeah, and audio is. Well, you find one thing that it does better than another, but does that make the overall thing better? You know, maybe it's better here or there, but does that make the product better for you? Yeah, see, that's where time comes in, which we mentioned in the last video. And, yeah. um you know, where you should take your time doing this. You shouldn't quickly switch things every 10 seconds, 30 seconds. It, well, yeah. it becomes maddening. Because, I mean, if you're doing it quick, you're probably only focusing on one specific thing because you don't have time to, like, you know, get yeah. the whole picture. So, yeah, you're, you're only seeing a tiny piece 
of the entire whatever you're comparing, you know. I know when I first started subjectively d comparing, like I was comparing op amps. This goes back to mm -hmm. 1989. Ah, I was working on our first product, JPS first product was the Golden Flute. And um, I had 10 different op amps that, you know, eight pin chips, right, that are amplifiers, right? Uh -huh. 10 different ones to choose from that I could have used. And I, try, I made a, a switch box where you just could mm. push a button, push or let go of a button, and it would switch between two devices. And, um, you know, some, there's, there's a place that did this for cables, too. I forget who. One of the cable manufacturers made an yeah. AB box that you could just, you know, basically double blind. You don't know what you, you just switch it, and it, it just switches between two things. But it's just switching between two amps. Bottom line is that I had 10 op amps. And I'm like, first of all, I didn't even know if I'd hear a difference. I had no idea. I've never done anything. This was prior to, you know. Mm. This was before JPS Labs even said, before I even got into it, I was still tech, to me, I was from the engineering side of me said, you know, a lot of things ain't gonna matter, right? Like most people say, it, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, but, but when you try it, all right, you actually do the work and try mm. it, you find that things do vary. Something mm -hmm. makes a variance. And going through 10 op amps, it was funny the, how you could actually narrow it down to a few where some of them were just they were weird. They were all different. They were all different. And I was making notes. I took notes. And this one sounds like this. And I was listening to music that I knew. It was the same music playing through an op amp circuit, like a unity gain, just to listen to the op amp, you know? Mm. And it was wild that they all sounded different. And I was trying to pick an op amp for this golden flute I was going to make, which was based on an op amp, right? And I wound up using an analog devices chip. But bottom line is that it was wild that you could do that. And what I found with the AB button by switching on and off was it became fatiguing and maddening. It reached a point where it was cool to switch between two things at first because I didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. at the first, I never did this before. Mm -hmm. So it seems logical to just have a button that you let go or release. You don't know, I, don't, I didn't know which one was which input. I didn't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just picking what I thought sounded best. But in the end, it, it got fatiguing like I'd sit there for like 10-15 minutes I'm like all of a sudden you you start to hear things and you don't hear things and then you go back to hearing things and you're, you're not sure do you play the same track mm. and anyway what it what it did teach me is it taught me to focus on specific things in the music certain things like there was a I think it was a Ricky Lee track or something I was listening to Ricky Lee Jones and there was a little lisp or something she had that come off her tongue right just the beginning yeah. of a track it was like a sibling like a tss. and that sibling that that transient Sounded completely different, all the different op amps. And it gave me a path to take. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh. And it, it, it wasn't necessarily what you want to focus on one thing, but it showed you that there was a difference in the circuit design that caused that particular sibling to sound different on all the different op amps. And right. once, once I realized there was something there that I could hone in on, I, I obviously over time I learned more and more things I found in the music that I could hone in on. And that's where I began learning how to do subjective comparisons. And, and taking more time to do it, not hitting a mm -hmm. button on and off because it didn't work. It was really hard to do, you know. Yeah, I've done it. It's just like um, like amps that have like uh, crossfeed or something, and you just you just like I don't even know which one I like anymore. <laughs> when you're just switching it constantly, yeah. it's like you hear a difference. Yeah, but right. is it better or worse? Yeah, right. right. It's always yeah. so hard to decide. Yeah, right. So and yeah. with audio or music, that's the difficulty. It's hard to point to something and say, well, this is why it's better. So to teach someone this is very problematic. You could give them examples right. to kind of jumpstart, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to notice or they're going to hear. You can't force it on someone too easily. And it's not like just a memorization task. You need to do the discovery for yourself to really understand it. Yeah, I mean, even if, let's say, we created a video and it had six tracks of music on it, listen to this, yeah. Not everybody's going to hear what we're talking about. Right. They have well, different, different systems, stuff, though, different yeah. headphones. There are cases, and there's YouTube videos I would encourage people to look at these things, things like uh, comparison of MP3 bit rates is a more common oh, one. Yeah. And they'll play different things, and you could watch a video, or you could download these test tracks or things like this yourself. And people will find tracks that exaggerate the differences or issues with compression. So I think it's kind of helpful to hear test tracks in those cases to kind of help understand what the differences can be in extreme cases. And then maybe that helps you to correlate it to what they are in practice. But it's very difficult to kind of put this along to like a system or to compare amplifiers in this manner. Because you can't just be like, well, I'll play a bad MP3 and then I'll hear the differences in the amplifier. Because sometimes they're very subtle. 
sometimes it may not really exist or to you and your system, they may not be a difference. And that's part of the issue. There is no certainty in this because maybe it doesn't matter to you. And should you even be looking for a difference if it's so minor you could barely tell? These and other questions. That's the difficulty, right? <laughs> well, I think that's what people say. You know, they, oh, I'm not going to spend a ton of money on gear or whatever because I can't hear the difference anyway. And, you know, I, I think that's shooting yourself in the foot, so to speak, because have you ever tried? You know, and, and I get it. If you don't care about that, that's cool too, right? I mean, if you don't care to hear that's the difference. That's almost better. Yeah, yeah. You're, but you're way better off. Agree. Yeah. You know, you are actually. If you're your wallet's better off. But the, right. the reality of it is, you know, it's kind of like always drinking cheap wines or cheap beers, you know, and please don't give me an expensive bottle of wine. I don't want to know what it tastes like, right? Because I don't want to have to buy yeah. it. I don't want to hate my cheap stuff, you know, type thing. So, so a lot of times I think price is a big factor. Yeah. Well, know? I know, uh, like, James May, he had a show about, like, wine tasting one time. And he did, he was like, I don't care. I get a $10 bottle or whatever. Yeah, That's right. fine. And then he went on some wine tour in France and stuff. And now he's like, now i got to buy expensive stuff. <laughs> in his case, he could afford it, obviously. Yeah, right. But now he's like, oh, now I have to buy better wine. Yeah, you're, you're up to 30 bucks, 20, 30 bucks minimum mm -hmm. instead of, you know, five to 10. Mm -hmm. So, which in the big in the big picture isn't that big a dramatic. But I guess. <laughs> unless you have a bottle yeah. a day. But. It's a consumable, though. Yeah, so right. at least audio isn't really the same thing. It's sort of the same impact to some extent. But your gear doesn't wear out quite as fast as a bottle of wine. Well, that's right? true. Yeah. You could get 5, 10, 20 years of enjoyment out of a system. So the value is like comparatively not that bad. Right. But still, there is a question, does it matter to you? And unfortunately, it's very hard for someone else to say definitively, oh, this should matter to you or you should hear this difference. So let's talk about how we do it. Like what I, what, personally, what I would do is I have obviously existing systems, speaker system, headphone systems. I could throw a device in there, whatever, a headphone app, a DAC. I'll put it in my existing system. So I'm, my reference is what I'm used to, my system. Put that piece in there, let it warm up, give it a week or so, leave it on if I can, as long as it's not too bass, just leave it on and just let it break in, let audio play through it because if it's brand new. And then, you know, every once in a while, I'll pop my head in the room and try, just listen to see if it's changing, see if I can hear a change through it through the first week or so. If it doesn't seem to be changing at all day to day, at least nothing I could perceive, then I'll sit down and you know do some more serious listening through some of my tracks. But the piece stays in the system. I ain't, I'm not taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in with something. Yeah, yeah. That is just freaking maddening to me. I, I don't listen like that. And I'm gonna, then, I, then I sit down, I listen to tracks I know, and I see how much I enjoy this piece. I'm, I'm looking for enjoyment. I, the, the idea is, with listening to music for most people is, pleasure <laughs> right yeah you're, you're entertaining yourself with it and yeah. you want it to be for you yeah, so essentially can you know, i live with this yeah would i want to keep this in here right yeah and then you know at some point go back to the other piece and now compare well you know what changed what am i missing what's different and so on leave that in back and go okay get your bearings back to your reference you know, and then, then you could do that a couple times every few days or something. At least that's what I would do. Usually once I go back and forth once, on, yeah, I got it down. You know, I'm like, you figured it out after you listen for a week or so. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, like once and you're like, go yeah. back. You're like, yeah. And then you can make sure, you know, yeah. do it one more right. time. Yeah, especially if it's something, if it's really close. But yeah. usually after a amount of time, you'll pick out a number of differences. I mean, how would you do it? How do you handle that's it? That's pretty much what I, I always have the same amp and headphones literally for like years so yeah. like usually if like yeah i'm trying out a DAC, yeah I just put it in and then just use it for a week yeah and then yeah give it time <laughs> right go back i think it's a pretty typical approach i'm sort of similar but uh a little different on the timetable so usually since i care about the mechanics the appearance the size the functionality of the product a lot more than it seems a lot of people do um that sort of tends to be a big barrier right out of the gate, and it needs to work a certain way. So I'll plug the thing in, I'll hook it up, I'll mess around with it, and if it's a DAC or an amp or something like that, does the volume knob work the way I expect? Does it look the way I would like? Does it fit in the system? Is the size right? And things like this. And then from there, I'll do the initial impressions compared to my old system, which we'll call the reference at the time. And of course, this tends to change as time goes on, but that's what I was used to, right? So that's that's my standard. And I'll compare it to that. And initially. I'll get the impression, is this better or worse? Is there anything that's different enough that it's overwhelmingly obvious? Sometimes there is, usually not really, if it's good. And then from there, you kind of narrow down 
start playing tracks and stuff like that? Does it do anything better or worse? Is there any nuance I should pay attention to? And if it isn't really appreciably better, usually I'll go back unless there's some mechanical um, aspect of the thing that I find more desirable. Or features or something. Yeah, like yeah. sometimes it's like, wow, this is really cool because this feature or this yeah. benefit that it has. And then I'll try to make it work. And then I'll put more effort in discovery. But if there isn't really anything better about it mechanically, and I don't really notice anything immediately, sonically, usually I won't go through the effort because I do find it takes weeks to months to be certain. But then to double check myself, I always go back. I'll sort of build the internal impression of the differences from what I had to what I put in. And then I'll go back and verify, is what I was expecting to see indeed there? Um, and usually it is, and I could see how people would say that you, you could trick yourself into the lot because that is indeed true. But generally speaking, with at least a moderate amount of experience, I think some assumptions can be made with reasonable certainty. Um, that's not to say that's always the best method, but if things are close enough, for me, it isn't really that important if, if something's a fraction of a percent better, um, if it's an amplifier or a deck or something like that, because I'm more concerned about the the price, the size. So you think price. about it. I think he thinks about it more than we do. Oh, well, <laughs> there is another thing that nobody brought up that I was just thinking We're about. more of a listeners. Um, is, um, yeah, if you leave it in there for a longer time, then you don't have that initial, like, oh, I had to change between XLR, RCA, frustration, switching stuff out, you yeah, know? Right. Like, if you're doing it, keep doing it. You're just, like, already kind of, you know, ah, pissed at that you <laughs> have to keep changing stuff. Yeah. So if you just leave it in for a week, then, yeah, you kind of get rid of that. Yeah, I think that's the best bet with anything that's new. You know? Time. Yeah. yeah. I've even, I know, like, when I was playing around with new DAC topologies, when I first heard my first R2R DAC, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it's kind of boring at first. It seemed kind of like mm -hmm. it wasn't as sparkly yeah. Yeah, as oh. the chipset style DACs that I had, you know. And and then, but I'm like, well, I didn't feel, for whatever reason, I didn't feel like taking it out. I didn't feel like switching. I just left it there. Mm -hmm. And when I'd go in my sound room, I would just, I kept using that DAC, and I was using it on speakers for a while. And it had to be a month or two. I don't know. You know, I don't listen every night. So, so I then I was like, you know what? I need to take that out. Mm. Go back to what I had. And I went back to what I had, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird because it was like I I thought it was pretty good. Mm. I was I was accustomed to it, and then it was a bit brash to me all of a sudden. I was listening to this smoother sound, and I got accustomed to it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of weird. You know, and then and then it's funny, but once you hear that, it's like, well, oh, that, yeah, that wasn't really that good after. That's kind of when there's big differences, like relatively speaking. It's like uh, like at one show, I think I said this before. The one guy walked into the room and he's like, "Oh, sounds like box speakers, right?" And so obviously that guy had uh, like electrostatic speakers oh, or something. Right. I mean, yeah, it doesn't sound anything like that, right? Yeah. So instantly knows it's like yeah oh. when you have like a, a big planer yeah. speaker that has it's basically bipolar where yeah. it emits sound from the rear and fills the area with you know it just creates a when it's set up properly it creates a massive sound stage in the room right and you go to a box and it's for to a guy that has yeah. that big system like that it always sounds like speakers coming from that one tweeter on that speaker you can right. you can hear it. it's just coming from there you can't it doesn't do this. Right, no A being required there. That's yeah. instantly completely different, right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. My, Mike at Arian Audio makes these speakers that are like that. He uses, uh, uh, I think they're ribbons, a bunch of ribbons in a, a plane, in a plane, in, in to make it just a tall speaker. Like I don't know, it was like twelve per speaker or something. It's just like a line source. Yeah. And then you know you set it up in a room and it's like uh, people just go, walk in. They walk in the room, and they're like. Oh, this is different. I mean, it's like just like that. You're right. like, what the hell's going on in here? And you sit down, and it just mesmerizes you. And it's a very different approach to playing back music. You know, kind of like our planer drivers are in the headphone. It's right. different than a dynamic, and it, they both have pluses and minuses. But there's, it's it's pretty obvious, I think, when you go between the two types. Right. You know, so even comparing that is. Could be a lot of work. It's a challenge because it's two different technologies creating it's complicated. sound. complicated. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This yeah. initial wow factor helps people get over their uh, preconceived notions. Oftentimes, so a lot of times people think, well, it's going to sound a certain way, or I'm going to feel a certain way about this product, or whatever. And then if you try it and it isn't initially overly impressive, you're going to confirm your preconceived notions, and that isn't necessarily always positive, but. Unfortunately, that's the reality for most people. So oftentimes a wow factor like that, if it does have a very different impression on you, then you might think, oh, maybe this is something different, and it allows you to have more time with it. 
it'll kind of pressure you into having more time. And usually, if you spend enough time with something, you'll kind of forget about these issues and, and when your initial impressions. But the reality is, especially for things like DAX, where the differences can be pretty subtle, it may take a month or months to really forget that this change occurred and get past your impressions of the architecture or the design or something, the design methodology. Well, especially if you're comparing DAX that are in the same price point, yeah. similar construction. They can be very, very similar. That's, t that's yeah. tough. Right. You know, I mean, there's going to be the analog sections will have differences, but a lot of times, you know, they might all be made from the same factory in China, so to speak, right? So it could be the same chip. <laughs> it could be yeah. just exactly yeah. the same, just a different chassis, yeah. you know, or similar designs. They just all use the same damn design because it's cheap, it's easy to get the parts, et cetera, right? So, I mean, you could see reasons why you, in the lower end of things, you'd see that. And so right. it's difficult It's difficult to compare because they're all, they're pretty much the same. If you actually knew the topology, you'd probably look in the, inside the box and go, oh, same damn thing. It's not thing. much different, yeah. Yeah, so really, you know, it's, it is difficult to compare stuff like that. This did just remind me of the time it only happened in Germany, and I don't know why, but in, in Munich one year, um, there was like three three separate people that asked about Diana if they're electrostatic. And that's the only, I've only heard that in Germany. Yeah. It's like, are these electrostatic? It's like, no. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, nobody's ever well, asked that in the U.S. in Europe, probably stacks is more prevalent. Yeah, I don't know. You know, because they're, they're there, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> well, correction, they were in Asia, but... I don't know. I mean, maybe uh, maybe Stax is just more popular in Europe. I don't well, know obviously, it. they didn't know anything about it before, right. so they didn't know that they were planar magnetic, which right. in the U.S., most people maybe seem to know. Maybe that's what it is. So yeah, I guess you know what it is. Less brand awareness over there. Right. I don't know. I'm sure there's a multitude well, of factors. Not only that, I guess if you go back a number of years, it wasn't that long ago. You yeah. know, in fact, uh, we're just celebrating our 10th anniversary, by the way, on headphones. That's right. Uh, yeah, the AB1266, like yeah, we got to, oh. yeah, I forgot it. We, we're going to need to do something with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the AB1266 has been out there for nearly 10 years. Nearly? Yeah. Nearly. It's yeah. A few months. Yeah, I don't know later when we in, the, later in the year. But yeah, but let's call it 10 years. You yeah. It counts, Close right? Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, I mean, and if you think back, there wasn't a hell of a lot in terms of planar out there. Odd as he had it was a, a couple things, there, there was now. nothing really. So it was just... That just started. style of headphone was just coming back, back so yeah. to speak. It's not, right? It wasn't new. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's new in the way it, the approaches everyone has. Right. You know, everyone's got their patents on this stuff. We all have unique ways of doing the same kind of driver technology mm -hmm. that separates, that makes the headphone sound different. Yeah, they're very different. Yeah. So, so even within, unlike the chipsets for DAX, within a, a speaker or a headphone, you can have wild variation from one one brand to the other or even model to model with some of the brands that are out there yeah. you know so when you think about it it's kind of wild but i think that stuff's a lot easier to compare and d more difficult in terms of how to choose right yeah it's easy to hear the differences right. but what do i really want which one's yeah. better i have no idea yeah if you don't have any idea it, that's that's the confusing part too much choice yeah so <laughs> that's that's tough like unfortunately there's no way that i could think of to advise somebody on how to make that choice because it's it depends. it's up to you. Right. It's your, it's With your headphones, personal. it's usually kind of more straightforward because the differences are more there. Yeah. With Daxo, it can be very difficult without living with the product for a long time unless you're going from a really cheap garbage one to a fantastic one. But what is fantastic? That's another subjective thing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So it does get very nuanced and complicated. And unfortunately, the recommendation is either get a lot of experience by listening to a lot of things and then it'll be easier in the future or spend a lot of time with it. And that, as they <laughs> say, is that. Yeah, it seems like the conclusions are always the same. It's like, well, you're gonna have to go out and try stuff. You gotta try <laughs> it, yeah. Well, get something, get get started. If you're not started with it, get started. Try something, you don't yep. have to spend a fortune, but get started. And that start will put you on a path to somewhere. <laughs> or it might let you know that you don't really care that much. Well, that's Either true. Either way, so. you're gonna do some discovery. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't like that, maybe you'll buy a camera next or something. Right? Yeah, that's fine too. <laughs> Just take up photography. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Next these, hobby. these are hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff to play with out there in the world. Amazon's yeah. your friend for some. Well, <laughs> for some people, it's their enemy. Well, too. that's yeah, true. Well. That's true. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of there's a lot of crap. There's a lot of uh -huh. generic crap on there too. There's a lot. So yeah, specialty stores are the best place to go if you if people have audio stores nearby, a dealer or somebody to go try the stuff. It's great because these guys. I mean, you know what they're doing typically. They, they have systems set up for yes. you. 
you don't have to make any guesses. They, they, they got the deck that goes with the amp, that goes with the speaker or the headphone. Yeah, hopefully just, they already did all that late work Yeah, and figured right, it out. It's right. a bit of a dying breed, unfortunately. Though. Yeah, it is. But that's where, you, that's where if you have never done this before, absolutely find a local high-end dealer and go and check out the freaking toys these guys have. Like mm -hmm. locally here, we got Speaker Shop. Unbelievable. How many things are in this store? It's a lot of stuff. Thousands for the size of, of pieces. Store, yeah. So many things. In that little store. Yeah. Just jammed in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it's different all the time. Yeah, right. It's fun to go there. Yeah. It's fun to go to the speaker shop because they always got cool toys. <laughs> Not too many places like that around, though. No. But if you, if you got one locally, that's where you want to go. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thumbs us up. And please subscribe. We got more coming.